the next talk is of Paula Suseta and she is not able to attend as I uh, already said and we will show you the video because we think she has really um, important ideas and we would like to share this video with you um, and we will not hook up with a Q&A but if you have the feeling as if you would like to uh, add some questions of course you're welcome so please um, uh, and to introduce Paula Suseta, I forgot, she's a um, social media uh, manager at the Fundación Mafre, which is the biggest insurance company in Spain. And um, she is very much uh, in the social media topic and she will um, focus on, on that. Hi, my name is Paula and, well, I would like to start saying and my apologies for not being able to join you at the conference. It was in my plans, but uh, unfortunately I haven't been able to do so. So the organization has been kind enough to let me send you this video, trying to run you through some of the ideas that I was going to share with you in my talk. Um, I believe that we're going through a huge change regarding the meaning of art and the work of art, but it's not something new. I mean, this has happened all along the history of art and the history of human beings, and it will happen many other times. In any case, I believe it's a very interesting moment because we have to take into account social media and the new role the audience is playing. In any case, behind any work of art and behind art, there is always an urge to communicate, to share, and maybe even to stand out. And that stays the same through time. Uh, social media, what has done is blur the, uh, the line between who was the audience, who was the art, the artist, and what is a work of art. I mean, can we define a work of art because it's done by somebody who calls himself an artist? Or can we regard a work of art taking into account what kind of quality parameters that change over time. Can we think that a gesture from the audience can become a work of art? And uh, if it does become a work of art, who owns it and who has the right to call it its own? Um, on the other hand, this goes much further into what an exhibition really is and how exhibitions can be called and played today. We are all used to the idea of museums in the 19th century. They were created to guard and to protect the works of art. We all know that in the 20th century, 20th century that has changed and they have, museums have had to become centers of encounter to create memories for the audience because otherwise they wouldn't come back. And we need the audience to be alive in museums. So, uh, is the audience allowed to create their own exhibitions because they represent, they make representations of the works of art? Now, this may be some of the questions that I want to line out, that I want to put out on the table. I don't think I have any of the answers. And as I said in my abstract, I believe that we may be closer to a revolution than to evolution, so it's better to change the questions than to change the answers. Um, Moving a work of art in the year 2018 is not the same thing as moving it in the 1980s, but moving a work of art that has, done, has been done in 1910 is not the same when you move it in the 1980s as when you move it in 2018. I mean, time goes by, and unfortunately, that time that passes by doesn't go in benefit of the work of art. It goes against the natural rules of conservation, they have to be more preserved, they're older, and we have already been over the time when the maximum trend was to do huge exhibitions that would travel all the world. Uh, the great collections are taking more and more care of their masterworks, so that means that most probably what I foresee is that works of art will be traveling less and it will be more difficult to see the real work of art. I will go into that later on, but I think that will create a different kind of exhibition and we already have some, some proof of that. Um, if, you, we, if we go back in time to the 1970s, 1980s, I would like you to think of Richard Prince. 
If you don't know the artist Richard Prince, uh, you do know him, of course, even if you don't know his name. Richard Prince is an artist from the 1970s, 80s, who uh, has been characterized by taking the pop icons and taking images and figures from the pop culture and the advertising culture and putting them into what can be called high art. One of the most interesting cases was the Marlboro Cowboy. Uh, if you are not uh, familiar with it, I will put in a video afterwards that you will see. There was a whole campaign uh, on Marlboro regarding the cowboy life in the United States. It, um, it tried to connect with the masculinity of the country. It was also something that tried to go back to the roots. But what happened was that Richard Prince took that icon from the pop culture and made it into high art by using a work that somebody else had, to, had done. He didn't create that image. He took that image and he actually, what he did was make pictures of that. There was a huge controversy and that is when the appropriationism started really being in, uh, in, in all the talks, to say the least, because there was uh, the question if, could you really call it your work of art if you were using a pre-existent work, if it was art or not art? That was another question. And uh, he decided uh, to question the idea of authorship and ownership of all the artistic imaginary. He still is doing it uh, today and uh, he's changed the meaning of creativity. Now, you will see in this video uh, some of the different points of view that you can find with his work. So as you see, one of the things that uh, the photographers who did the pre-existing work uh, um, point out on Richard Prince is that they say that he doesn't even bother with the risk of failure because he's already working with something that was already successful and then he what he did was do retouches you know technical retouches that we actually do now when we use our instagram with different filters so uh the works would not be exactly what they were in the advertising campaign what really happens here is that as you have seen intellectually you can always uh respect and explain a professionism, but when it goes to you or emotionally only, or if it's your work of art, um, of course you don't understand it anymore. Because the idea is that if it's your work, you feel that it has been stolen, even if it's for a different meaning. Now, you have seen what was the first, how could I say it? Um, the way the photographers that had felt that the work had been stolen, what their feelings are. But uh, the thing is that Richard Prince has been doing this kind of work on and on, and we have a different kind of approach in the year 2015, when he took a picture from an Instagram feed of an artist, and again made it into one of his works of art. You can see some uh, of the details of this uh, uh, event here. So you see the change of attitude, it's radical. I mean, uh, Sean Fader, what decided was that uh, to understand that uh, Richard Prince had taken something that had been digital, free, and for the people into something that was uh, unique, that was big, and that was only for some people. So that is our mentality changing and trying to profit out of, of, of a different situation. What I'm trying to point out is that the changes that we see in the works of art and the changes that we see in, um, in the museums are the changes happening mentally also in our audiences and we have to be very aware of all of that. Uh, I will, I, in any case, I want to remind you that uh, Richard Prince has been making money and has, even if he says, as you have seen in the first video, that he never thought of making money when he did the Cowboy series uh, uh, photographs, uh, in the year 2000, the most famous cowboy uh, photograph went over a million dollars in, in auction. So he has made uh, quite a deal of money on that. And well, and the owners and the collectors who have resold him have made a lot of money on that. And that is also a parameter that we have to take into account, uh, unfortunately, 
for some, fortunately for others, when you think of a work of art. I mean, does the idea that you can live on your work mean that it is art? Is it only work or how can you qualify it? We are again with parameters like quality that cannot be easily or rigidly um, programmed because they change with time and they really change with the different voices that you take into account. Uh, and again, who is the artist? Who can claim to be the artist? And Richard Prince, I think, is, is the best example because with Sean Fader, what he did, as you have seen, is that he decided to call himself the curator and respect him as the artist. But in any case, he had hung the work of somebody else in his own exhibition under his name. So our audiences are taking pictures of, of most, well, in most of the museums now, pictures are allowed. So our audiences are taking pictures normally of what they see and what they're creating are representations of the works that they're seeing. Mostly sometimes they're altered even if just by filters or sometimes they're even altered because they appear in the works. We have to understand that that is creating a new kind of artist that even if, it does, if they don't make money on that, they are creating an influence and they're creating a whole trend that is getting that work of art to be known. I mean, if, if you have uh, a group of people visiting your museum and you let them take pictures and they're enthusiastic about it and they just upload picture, pictures in Twitter and Instagram and you may have some influencer and, uh, and a great influencer just takes a picture and says, what a great exhibition. You know that that picture, uh, even if it's not a work of art, has taken you much further than even the real work of art would have taken you. So that's why I'm saying I'm not going to give you any of the answers. I'm just trying to point out all the different questions that I think we have to uh, take into account. And we do have to recognize the new role of the audiences, not as a passive uh, collective that decides to just watch and listen, but who create work. I will not qualify it as a work of art, but who create work and who had create a trend of thought based upon that uh, based upon that work. So really the great difference you can say that what social media has brought to this uh, playground is quantity and impact. Even in that case are things really that different from before? I mean uh, do we has art changed so much or has the scenery changed so much? Uh, in order to talk a little bit about that, I want to point out uh, an exhibition done by the Sachi Gallery, Self Selfie. What they did was bring from the selfies from the 19th century, which are the portraits, the auto portraits we always know, we, we've known forever, to what are now the selfies that we do in social media. The thing that what has changed is the mass level, the ubiquity, and the new codes, because we are using that imagery of ourselves to create, to increase our self-esteem and to have ourselves be known. That was done before by fewer people, but now we're all allowed to do that, thanks to technology. So technology has brought the tools that we didn't have, that well, that the others didn't have before, in order to create those works. Again, the, the line between the work of art and any kind of picture, or the work of art and any kind of representation blurries. And uh, just that brings out the question that, could we ever do an exhibition just based upon the representations of what the audiences have done based on an exhibition? I mean, can we make an exhibition on the representation of the exhibition that our public do? Is that allowed or not? Can we question that? Do we think that has the right to be up on the walls in the museum? Or is it a huge controversy to do that? Um, what Really, what this brought up is that exhibitions are changing and exhibitions may not be what have been until now. We can have traditional exhibitions, we have new, new exhibitions, but maybe some of the traditional exhibitions may not be possible to be done. One of 
the great uh, exhibitions that have been done lately with the great masterpieces is black and white, Picasso black and white by the Guggenheim Museum by creator Carmen Jimenez. She put together an incredible uh, amount of masterworks by Picasso. She brought them to New York and also to the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. Um, you have to think the time that must have taken, the money must have taken in insurance, the agreements it must have taken because those are great masterpieces that were taken out of a curatorial conversation in their regular places in their museums. So something had to be put there. So do we think that in the future that is going to be as easy? Uh, are we going to be able to move these great works uh, as easily, even taking into account that even if we pay for insurance is not really what we pay for insurance, but can the damages be really solved or will works remain in the walls so we can go and just see them in what is their natural place, which is the place in the collection. Um, at this point, uh, also the curatorial uh, um, idea that Carmen Jimenez had was really contemporary and modern because she decided to talk about Picasso in the black and white instead of taking color and just draw the whole speech on that. So again, it's one of the, I believe it's one of the most modern exhibitions done in the last 10 or 15 years. Would she be able, would the Guggenheim be able to put together an exhibition like that again? Or would we have to go back to, well, back forward to representations of, of works? Uh, technology is coming to help us and one of the pilot um, exhibitions, well, the pilot, uh, um, how can I say it, one of the essays that had been done to do that kind of exhibition have been done by a small, not so small, but a startup in, in, in Spain called Matt Pixel, who work in Gigapixel and creating high resolution representations of work. And they have done an exhibition in, uh, in Donostia, in San Sebastián, called Seven Museums, Seven Works of Art. What they have done is put together representations of the works and create interactive conversation with the public based upon those works. So uh, the people have been able to see works that otherwise they wouldn't have seen in any case, uh, Rubens, uh, some paintings from the caves from the first uh, human beings on, on Earth, uh, certain works that would have never been able to travel and they've also been able to interact with those works. Uh, do we think that could be the future of exhibitions instead of moving the real works? Or could both of them just be combined and live together like the classical or the typical books and the digital books? That is one of the questions we will have to answer in the upcoming years. And in, in any case, I do believe that uh, even though it may get easier for us human beings to travel and to go places, maybe for works of art, it will not be such, so easy to do so, taking into account the value and what they mean in the history of art. So maybe in the future it will be easier for us to travel to see the works and what we will have in our cities will be representations of the works that will not be able to travel. In, in any case, um, seeing the real thing will be something that will be shared like a great uh, achievement of, of a certain audience. And even if we find different ways of experience art and different ways of creating works of art, the meaning behind the art and the works of art will always be the same, which is to communicate, to share, to stand out and in time to create the further steps of the history of art. Thank you.